Oh, hello, students. We're just going to briefly look at the Eureka Stockade uh, and its significance in Australia's history uh, with relation to the gold fields. And of course, there's the Eureka Stockade flag. You might have seen that being flown uh, down Cronulla on a couple of utes as people drive by. It's typically a symbol of rebellion against authority these days. And it, it originated uh, on Bakery Hill all those years ago uh, at the, in the Australian Gold Rush. Okay, there it is. Let's, let's have a look at it. Okay. Here's a couple of images of the Gold Rush. There's some, some paintings here. Uh, not the Gold Rush, sorry, the Eureka Stockade. Uh, here's some, some troopers storming the stockade. It's all right if you don't know what it is yet. We're going to talk about that, but it's a pretty violent picture there. Uh, it does occur to me that... Now, it does occur to me that uh, you've already watched the, the prior video, so you've got some idea that there was a rebellion and guns and battle and blood. Uh, so... You do have some idea, I, I, I understand that. Let's have a look at another image there. It's a pretty graphic image you can see, very violent. Uh, you can see in the middle there someone's copped a bayonet to the belly. That's pretty ordinary. Uh, probably a good representation of what was happening on, on that day uh, so many so many years ago. Okay, let's have, have a look at the next slide there. Oh, another slide there, a different style of art, of course, but still troopers, uh, many more troopers you'll see storming a... A little fortification that's uh, been, been, been manned by diggers as such. Uh, you, you can see that uh, the diggers are, are getting soundly beaten there, that the troops are overwhelming in force and number and in power, and uh, indeed that, that's exactly what happened uh, uh, all those days ago uh, in the Australian Gold Rush at the Eureka Stockade. Okay, so the Eureka Stockade, uh, what was it? What was it? Well, it was a stockade or a or a pretty ordinary little ramshackle hut of sorts uh, built by the, the diggers on, on Bakery Hill. There it is, the stockade. It was built by the diggers on Bakery Hill uh, above the Eureka Strike. So there was a patch of, uh, of gold when they were calling it the Eureka Strike and they, the strike, and, and they, built this, they built this stockade as such uh, on, on the hill above the uh, Eureka Strike. And uh, I guess the big question is why? Uh, why did we build this? Uh, why did the diggers build this this little tiny little mini sort of fort uh, on the on Bakery Hill above the Eureka Strike in Ballarat, Victoria? Well, the reason was uh, the license fees, and uh, that was the main reason. The, the diggers weren't just able to operate uh, on the gold fields for, for nothing. They they had to to pay uh, the government uh, a license fee. That, were, that that means money in order to uh to to be able to dig on the gold field. You know how like mum and dad they drive cars and Mr Burns drives a car. Uh, every year we pay a license fee of sort uh for the privilege of driving on the road. Now now the diggers uh had to pay a license fee for the privilege of uh digging in the gold fields and the license fee was quite steep. It was very very expensive and some diggers just couldn't afford it. They they couldn't afford the license fee at all, so that's the first problem that the diggers had with the gold fields. Now, second of all, the diggers were unhappy with the brutal ways the license fees, right, were collected. Okay, now the the nice uh, the nice officers didn't just come by and uh, ask for the uh, for the license fee. They would actually come by and chase the diggers, and they would wrestle with them and fight with them and. They were, they were quite aggressive, uh, the, the, the policemen on, ho on horseback, uh, they, they chased the diggers down, if they, uh, they chased the diggers down to, to find the license they were looking for, and, and uh, often if they didn't have a license, they were hauled off and thrown into jail, and uh, you, have to, you have to be aware, uh, you know, perhaps some of these diggers were, were, were being licensed cheats, they, they, they should have paid for their license, but you know, sometimes they just weren't finding any gold, and they just simply couldn't afford a license. It was a bit of a lose-lose situation. So guys, what did they do? Well, the diggers got together. And more or less underneath uh, this gentleman here, uh, a gentleman called Peter Layla. This, this young fella here, Peter Layla, right? Uh, they organised themselves into a group called the 
Ballarat Reform League, which is just the name of a group. It could have been called the Labor Party or the Liberal Party or any other group, but these diggers organized themselves in a group called the Ballarat Reform League. There was many of them, and they they used a, a, a British uh, a British uh, group's uh, principles, and, and uh, they passed a resolution. All these these diggers had had enough. They'd absolutely had enough of the uh, of paying the license fees, and uh, there was other reasons too. But the license fees were the main issue, and the way the the license fees were collected. And and, and here's the resolution they passed. It is the inalienable right of every citizen to have a voice in making the laws he is called on to obey and that taxation without representation is tyranny. And that sounds reasonable to me. I mean, uh, if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you have to obey some laws eh, in this country anyway, surely you want to have a voice in, in, in making the laws. And uh, if you're getting taxed, like people are taking your money, but you don't have a say in how the country's running, like no representation, well... Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps that a pretty is a pretty unfair situation. I mean, currently, of course, uh, in in this country, your mum and dad and me and, and other people, Mr. Coot and Mr. Bowden, uh, they all get taxed, but we also have a, a a say in 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 how in how the country runs. We get to vote for Tony Abbott or Julia Gillard, and then they spend our money on 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 running the country, but. In 1851, that wasn't the case. The Queen was in charge, and whoever the Queen put in charge was in charge of Australia. Uh, the miners didn't get to vote, uh, so the miners just had their, their, their tax taken away, gone, just taken, money taken off them for for whatever the government wanted. Okay, and they didn't like it. This gentleman didn't like it the most. He's called Peter Layla, and they and they created a flag to uh, stand against the. Uh, stand against the government. Okay, they weren't having enough. They were having enough of it. There was lots of them. And they and they were sick of it. And you can see there's there's the fort as such. I mean it, it's not much, is it? Just let's, let's have a look at some of the oh whoops a daisy, sorry about that guys. Let's have a look at the, the fort. It's the you know, little pieces of wood, some barrels, okay, there's not much. There there's the flag and of course you can see it's very easily overrun. But uh, the the diggers the diggers did they did they did try to uh, try to stand against the government. They did make an official stand against the government troops. Uh, they, 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 they were horribly overwhelmed uh, by the government. Uh, in a sense, they almost tried to make their own little country. <laughs> when you build a fort in Australia, that's essentially what you're saying. This is our place and you can't come in. And They even talked about uh, seceding from uh, the United Kingdom, which is something that they were threatening to do if they're their demands were not met, the demands for less license fees and less taxes and better treatment on the gold fields. And uh, you can see it, was, uh, it wasn't really much of a stockade, it's more just a few pieces of wood thrown down and a defiant attitude. I mean, this chap down here looks particularly defiant, doesn't he? He's saying, you troops, leave us alone, go away, these are our gold fields and treat us, treat us better and we're not happy. Here you go, and I'm just going to read this out, guys. I'm, at 3 a.m. on Sunday the 3rd of December at 1854, a party of 276 police and military personnel under the command of Captain John W. Thomas approached the Eureka Stockade and a battle ensued. There's no agreement as to which side fired first, but the battle was fierce, brief and terribly one-sided. The ramshackle army of miners was hopelessly outclassed by a military regiment and was routed in about 10 minutes. And there's the, let's have a look at it. Okay, it didn't take long. Pretty miserable little battle for the miners, no doubt about it. Okay, during the height of the battle, uh, Layla, our hero from before, was shot in the left arm and he took refuge under some timber and was smuggled out of the stockade and hidden. I mean, the, the soldiers wanted him because he was the, uh, the leader as such, so he was... He was, he was hidden and smuggled away. Okay. Uh, his arm actually was later amputated, which is pretty grim. And uh, there's a brief little comic I thought you might enjoy. You can have a look at that briefly, by all means. Pro old Mr. Layla lying there with a, a gunshot in his arm. And, and they did try to find him. They did, the government did try to find him because he was the ringleader of this stockade, this rebellion as such.
Okay, and there were 34 digger casualties, of which 22 died. There's 22 men died, uh, standing up for what they believed in on that hill that day. Uh, the unusual proportion of the killed to the wounded is owing to the butchery of the military and troopers after the surrender. Now, that's a quote. I apologise, I should have had quote lines there. That's actually what Peter Layla said afterwards, so you can make your own mind up there. But it is unusual that there would be um, so many uh, death. <laughs> So many dead and uh, just uh, just that, that that amount injured. Usually, it's usually the other way around. It's usually more injured and lesser dead. But it does show that there was a fair bit of angry angry soldiers on that hill that day. And it might just be worth having another look at that painting again just to get a sense of of what happened. Of course, we don't have any videos. We don't even have any photos of what happened. All we've got are artist images. <laughs> Well, they eventually uh, the government rounded up who was left, and they and they 